package of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. And don't forget your change. You never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with greetings from Red Foley and his entire company. First tonight, we want you to meet a new member of the cast, one Red Skelton, who certainly needs no introduction. Listen, Del, I need plenty of introduction. <laughs> okay, Red, if that's the way you feel about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, and howdy, folks. Hello there, microphone. Hello there, Skelton. Welcome to Avalon time. And uh, move in a little closer. Say, what is this, a microphone or a microphony? <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I do anything tonight, I'd like to go on record by saying that if Fred Allen thinks that he can stir up a lot of free publicity by slanderously attacking me in one of those radio feuds... <laughs> gee, I wish he'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I feel great tonight. Look, I just got back from a pet, sh uh, pet shop. I was over there. I took my dog back. The other day, I got a wire-haired terrier that won't bark. So I took him back and had him rewired for sound. <laughs> he's really... No, he's really a smart dog, though. He's a talent scout for a flea circus. <laughs> I thought that would get more than that, but I... <laughs> we'll skip right on to the next one. They're all here. See, <laughs> but he's really a smart dog. No, and really a lovely thing. And intelligent. And what a watchdog. Last night, a burglar, a ro <laughs> thief broke into my house. He went downstairs and started ransacking everything. And I go downstairs, and what do you think? There is my dog holding the flashlight for the robber. Say, <laughs> hey, listen, uh, speaking of dog, Skelton, yes? didn't you give my little boy a dog? Well, come to think of it, I did give your little uh, boy a dog. Well, you can go right over to my house, and you can have all of them back. Yeah. Oh, I can say. <laughs> well, Sammy, tickle and death to get him. Uh, where do you live, Dell? Next door at the post office. Jeepers, creepers. Phil, play a number. I got to go down to the post office and see about a litter. <laughs>
Here he is, folks, the singing star of Avalon Time, Red Foley. Well, thank you, Dell, and howdy, everybody, and hello to you, Red. Well, same to you, Red. Say, how about that? Red Foley, Red Skelton, we're both on the Red Network. You think the Dice Committee will investigate? Later, <laughs> 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 all kidding aside, Red, I'm pardon me for interrupting there, but how about singing a nice western song for my grandmother, huh? Oh, Red, uh, why don't you sing one? Oh, I only sing in bathtubs, and I haven't sung for years. <laughs> How about me uh, singing in the saddle, huh? Well, singing in the saddle's all right if your horse is named Avalon. Well, we got that plug in. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. I'm a singing in the saddle. Guide me from above. I'm a heading for heaven and love. I've been rounding up the long lost doggies out on the lone prairie. I'm heading for my ranch house, heaven, where she waits for me. I'm a singing in the saddle, singing all the way. For the roundup is over today. I'm a singing in the saddle to the stars above. I'm a heading for heaven and love. To the rhythm of the hoofs, I'm a humming. Get along, get along, old pal There's a fairy gal who knows I'm a-coming Waiting beside the old corral I'm a-singing in the saddle Guide me from above I'm a-heading for heaven and love Well, thank you, friends. Thank you. And now, Peter Grant, uh, will you move in, please? Yes, sir, Red, you betcha. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to let someone else tell you about Avalon cigarettes. John P. Youngblood of Niagara Falls, New York, smoked a popular price brand of cigarette for years. After hearing about Avalon's on one of our programs, he tried them. But here's the story, just as Mr. Youngblood wrote it to us. Well, I bought a pack of Avalon's. I smoked one, and I could hardly believe it. And I smoked that pack and bought another. I thought perhaps the first pack was deceiving me. But the second pack did the trick. I knew absolutely I had found a fine, mild smoke. I'm smoking Avalon's from now on. Thank you, Mr. Youngblood. And friends, millions of people, yes, millions, are switching to Avalon's because they are a superior quality cigarette. 100% union made. And don't forget, Avalon's cost... Three to five cents less than popular priced brands, but you'd never guess they cost you less. You couldn't want finer quality cigarettes, regardless of price, regardless of brand. In fact, Avalon's give you super fine tobaccos and a truly superior blend at a real saving. So the next time, why not ask for Avalon's? And save the difference. That's Waller wrote it. Bob Strong arranged it. Jeanette sings it. Honeysuckle Rose.
when they see you out with me, say, I don't blame them, goodness knows, honeysuckle rose. And when you're passing by, flowers root and sigh, and I know the reason why, you're much sweeter, goodness knows, honeysuckle rose. Oh, well, I don't buy sugar. You just have to touch my cup, cause you're my sugar. It's sweet when you stir it up, and when I'm taking sips from your tasty lips, seems the honey fairly drips. Your compaction, goodness knows, my honey sucker Jeanette, mighty nice. That really was lovely, Jeanette. And next week, folks, Jeanette's going to sing the theme song of the new, of the new Frankenstein and Dracula picture entitled Two Creepy People. <laughs> yeah, I like to punch the guy in the nose who told me that was funny. But, but uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of creepy people and places, you should see the hotel that I checked into this afternoon. It's really a nice hotel. It's run by a Jewish fellow and an Irishman. They call it the St. Levy. <laughs> Okay, can you picture this, though? A Jewish-Irish hotel with Mexican decorations. <laughs> in fact, there's a Mexican in every room. La Cucaracha. <laughs> it's a nice place, though. They change sheets every day from one bed to the other. <laughs> you should see the landlord, though. I'm t- I never saw anybody so ugly in my life. Last night, he looked in the mirror and then said bear traps all over the house. <laughs> Look, if he looks like a glass of stale beer, all body and no head. You know? <laughs> And of all the crazy people, there's a fellow across the hall from me. No kidding. He raises chickens in his room. I don't mind that, but every time I open up my door, they come in and fight with my pigeons. It's really... You'll have to stop, lady. This is only a half-hour program. Well, I appreciate it. It's really a nice hotel. It's run by a uh, Jewish fellow and an Irishman. They call it the St. Lee... I said that, didn't I? That's why I heard it. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'll pardon me, but somebody just walked in with a cap and gown on. Looks like a fugitive from Yale. I, uh, say, uh, what's on your mind, Professor? There's always something on those guys' minds. Uh, I, uh, I run a question and answer program in the next studio. Oh, you do? I, uh... I just asked the contestant a question. Oh, you asked a question. Well, that's... I, I can't even answer it myself. Oh, well, uh... <laughs> Maybe if you'd ask the question instead of asking the question, you'd... <laughs> no, but maybe I could help you out, Professor. What is the question? What? Uh, uh, what is an armature? An armature? Yes. That's a guy that sings on Major Bull's program. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you drink? Yes, I do. Very bad habit. <laughs> guy's a candidate for a straitjacket. Oh. Pardon me. Are you Mr. Skelton? Well, I think I am. Well, that's fine. I hear you're looking for a secretary. Well, I could. You... Have you had much business experience? Well, a little. Are you good at answering letters? Well, I might be. Can you take dictation yeah. and type? Yes, I can. You won't mind working overtime, will you? Well, if it's not too late. And could you get a couple of business references? Well, I guess I could if I represent... Well, that's business. fine. I'm hired. Well, I... <laughs> What is this, an entrance to an alley or something about everybody bothering me? Well, Bings, you're my secretary. Take a letter, a love letter to Greta Garbo. <laughs> my dear honey baby. <laughs> Are you kidding? Why, nobody ever got the first base with Garbo. What do you mean, nobody ever got the first base with Garbo? I suppose Leopold Strakowski. <laughs> Really, uh, take a letter in shorthand. This is going to be a very short letter. <laughs> my dear brother Christopher. <clears throat> oh, uh, How do you spell Christopher? Uh, very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> my dear brother Christopher, I am sending you, C.O.D., my old overcoat. To make the package lighter, I have removed all the buttons. P.S. You'll find the buttons on the inside pocket. <laughs> Say, that typewriter's making an awful lot of noise. 
Well, something's got to click on this program. Yes. <laughs> Where shall I address this letter? Well, address it to Christopher's Cleaning Shop. Christopher Street, Christopher. <laughs> oh, your brother's a cleaner. Oh, and what a cleaner. Last week, I removed two spots from my suit. A thin spot and a five spot. <laughs> uh, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. The fugitive's back again. What is it this time, Professor? Now, uh, really, I, uh, I hate to bother you again, but... Well, uh, that's all right. I am stumped. Again, huh? <laughs> well, what's the question this time, Professor? It's a question about, uh... About baseball. Baseball, say, an old bat like you should be able to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Professor. Maybe I can help you out. I'm an old baseball fan myself. What's the question? Uh, what? Uh, what is a pop fly? A pop fly? That's a male insect with a blessed event. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, do you enjoy home cooking? Yes, I do. Uh, you should go home sometime. <laughs> Say, that guy's got me bothered. It's so dumb. That reminds me of the secretary who once now, thought that shorthand... if you're going to start telling jokes about secretaries, I'm leaving. Yeah. Well, how do you like that, Dell? Mm -hmm. If a stranger comes in, I give her a job, she can... That's as bad as the announcer. Now, wait who a got... minute. If you're going to tell jokes about announcers, I'm leaving, too. Well, my first program, and I never met so many touchy people in my life. Ah, tell a story. Once upon a time, there were two goldfish. <laughs> Well, I don't guess anybody gets sore if I mentioned Avalon cigarettes. <laughs> oh, gee, there goes the sponsors. Oh, folks. For peace on earth, here's a resolution every nation in the world could well afford to adopt. The neighbor boys sing, I ain't going to study war no more. I'm to lay down my burden Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm to lay down my burden Down by the riverside study war no more, ain't one 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 study war no more. One to lay down my sword and shield, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Down by the riverside One to lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside To study war no more I ain't one study war no more Ain't one study war no more Ain't one study war no more study wall no more, ain't one study wall no more, ain't one study wall no more. Study wall no more. The sentiment of that beautiful spiritual is well taken. We're always glad to hear from you, and we're always glad to hear from you, Peter Grant. Take over, will you please? Well, Dell. You remember when the great American pastime was keeping up with the Joneses? When we paid a certain price for our automobile because the neighbors had one like it. And we paid the top price, the top price, mind you, for cigarettes because it was the accepted standard price. Well, we've come a long way since then. Today we buy for real value. Millions have found that they can get highest quality cigarettes for three to five cents less when they buy Avalons. Now, here's an everyday scene from a big city department store. The clerk at the tobacco counter is talking to the store buyer. Oh, uh, Mr. Crawford, we need more Avalons. 
You better double our regular order. Order Avalon's again? Why, say, they're selling faster every day. Yes, you bet they sure are. And you can understand why if you ever smoked one. Yeah? Sure, they're real quality cigarettes. And still, they cost several cents less. And he's absolutely right, friends. Avalon's are quality cigarettes. Make no mistake about that. Yet they cost three to five cents less than popular price brands. Give them a trial. You'd never guess they cost you less. Next time, forget price habit. Give your thrifty judgment a chance. Ask for... Avalon cigarettes. And don't forget your change. If you like your jazz music hot and slow, here's just what the doctor ordered. Phil Davis and the Avalon Orchestra's prescription of Beale Street Blues. I appoint you my all-time musical doctor. Well, sir, that goes for me, too, Dale. That's fair enough, Fred. But remember, it takes all kinds of ingredients to spell variety. So what are you and the Avalon Chorus going to sing for us tonight? Well, it's an old tune, but one most everybody likes. And it's different from all our other numbers tonight. Throw another log on the fire. Another log on the fire Keep my golden memories aglow I don't see the face of my loved one When the logs are burning low Throw another log on the fire Bring back all the sweetest days I've known When our hearts were young in the springtime And her love was mine alone Now there's nothing left but the embers Springtime seems so long ago Another log on the fire Keep my golden memories 
arms are closed. Pour another love from the fire. Keep my golden memories aglow. I don't see the face of my love. Nothing left but the embers. Springtime seems so long ago. Throw another log on the fire. Keep my golden memories aglow. Thank you, folks. And now, Peter Grant, will you introduce the Avalon Brothers? They need no special introduction, Red. All I have to say is, when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon Brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon see the parade. So why not always Avalon with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents, plus city or state tax. Say, uh, Red Foley, I sure enjoyed your singing tonight. Well, thanks a lot, Red Skelton. And you know, I like it. Yes? The, uh, you know, I liked it, too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, Red, uh, why don't you read the folks that telegram you received from Fred Allen, eh? Well, have we got time? Why, sure, go ahead. Well, it says, Dear Red, why should I pan a you in a feud? Why, in one week, I could knock you flatter than my voice. <laughs> so I'll paddock you on the back. Best of luck, Brick Top. Signed, Fred Allen. Well, thanks a lot, Fred, and I think that's one of the nicest pats on the back I ever got. Good night, folks. Good night, Red. Well, good night, uh, Red. And good night, everybody. Friends, we cordially invite you to Saturday evening at this same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. This is Del King saying good night, everybody. Avalon Time originated in the studios of the Nation Station and has reached you through the National Broadcasting Company.